to all my blood hunt brothers and sisters are you new in Prague do you love going around sucking blood and kicking some ass well this video is for you do you want to go from looking like this to looking like this do you want to go from playing like this to absolutely destroying kids like this you chose the right video. Welcome to the channel. And why you hunting? But now the reaching ain't no touching. Cause bitch, I'm made for greatness. And bitch, I'm underrated. And look, look, I ain't even get started yet. Look, 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 look. That I'm the bad guy. Leave them looking shook. These lyrics hit you like a drug. Oh my god! Half I'm scared of me, scared of me. You fell in love with the bitch and she giving that head to me, head to me. I used to fuck with this new blood hunt update has been changing the game. We've been introduced with a new character, we've been introduced with new points of interest, and a whole lot of other new cosmetics and everything more. But listen, I couldn't but help notice that there's a lot of new players coming. Also, with the holidays coming up, Christmas is in five days. I repeat, Christmas is in five days. So there's gonna be a lot of new kids, a lot of new adults, whatever you wanna whatever you wanna say. There's gonna be a lot of new people with PlayStation 5s, and there's gonna be a lot of new people with those PlayStation 5s looking for new games to play. And who doesn't go to the free section? So, with this being said, I wanted to drop a blood hunt tips for beginners, new guide, whatever you wanna call it. I wanted to drop a blood hunt video for all new players and what you should know straight off the back in the beginning all right guys first one of the most important things to know about blood hunts is the civilians the civilians are a very key important part to you staying alive and praying and also you getting the upper hand in any gunfight gun battle or anything and you might ask why there are full blood renaissance broken up into scattered civilians around the map I like to call these in-game perks okay so going over the perks as far as the blue perk, because I'm not going to sit here and try to say all these names for these perks. These perks are hard as fuck. But going over the blue perk, what blue does for you is each level of this perk would decrease the cooldown by 10, 25 to 50%, depending on your character's archetype ability. Now switching over to purple. Purple would provide players with a low cooldown for a clan ability. Each level of this perk would decrease the cooldown by 10, 25, and also 50%. Switching over to orange, orange will provide players with increased melee damage. Each level of this perk will increase the melee damage by 10, 25 to 50%. Meaning, you swinging that motherfucking sword or whatever the hell you got axe, you're, you're a little bit more likely to one tap a motherfucker. Let's be real. And then last but not least, to me this is the most important out of every single perk that you can find in one of the humans is the sanguine perk the sanguine perk will provide players an increased passive health recovery boost when not taking damage each, each level of this perk will increase per second passive health recovery by 0 0.5 1.5 and also 3.0 health percentage if you do not know what this means it means if you didn't take a syringe or blood bag yet but you're still running around not taking damage at all you will still gain health, but at a lower percentile. But think of this in a scenario like this. Think if you're in a gunfight, you need to run away. Your teammate just got killed, something like that. You need to run away, but you don't have any heals. You getting away and also you having just a split second of not getting shot at just gives you a little bit more time for your your percentage of health to start increasing by itself. Trust me, that's a it's a, it's a big thing and it's a big boost during gunfights. Also, civilians can also provide an extra life perk. An extra life perk only can happen or can be obtained when you're in solos. It cannot be obtained in duos, nor trios, nor team deathmatch. What happens in solos is you get two lives, if that makes sense. If you die one time, you have no more lives. You die a second time, you're out. Or what can happen is you can die one time, find a civilian with a red glowing heart. Once you eat or feed on that civilian, 
you will obtain or you will get another life piece. Entities can be found at certain points of interest around the map. You will see on the map there's a, a little red cross on the map. Those are where you can find the entities. The entities are going to be the, the guys dressed up in the armor trying to shoot your ass. You know, typical dumb shit. Entities. If you're able to kill an entity, which they're not hard to kill at all. If you're able to kill an entity and also feed on an entity, what will happen will, it will also unlock a renaissance slot. If you don't know what a renaissance slot is, a renaissance slot is when we were talking about the perks that will be obtained. Um, starting off, you can only obtain three perks right off the bat. Any other renaissance that you want to be added or stacked, you have to either A, kill and feed on an entity, or you have to kill and feed on another human player all right so guys another tip that i wanted to mention you guys are always keep armor plates armor plates are very important when it comes to this game armor plates provide you with 50 more hit points for you to be able to add to your health so you already start with a standard 200 health but once you put in an armor plate it'll give you an extra 50 with stacks and gives you a 250 health you can find armor plates in the back of armored trucks, which are um, have police listed on the side, you can also find armor plates within some weapon stores or all weapon stores, depending on what type of loot they have in them. And then also with the new character, the warden, once a warden actually feeds on someone or he actually feeds on an entity, it will drop an armor plate for you. Here's tip number three. And tip number three will consist of adding your perk and also studying your archetype. And here's why this is a tip. So if you notice, if you go into the archetype slab, you start to notice that there's seven archetypes now, with the warden being added as the seventh, the seventh archetype. Um, beside your character to the left, you should see where it says archetype perk. This will give you a perk that you will carry inside the game the whole entire time. They can't be obtained without billions or anything like that inside the game. It's the perk that you actually carry inside the game. With that being said, it is important that you go in there and you select the right perk that is really consistent with your playstyle. For me, and when I rock Siren, I actually choose Marshall, which is gained double blood renaissance, but blood hunts last twice as longer. That's just a company to my playstyle, so that's what I would grab. But you might have but you might want to go in there and grab something different. Not all characters have the same perk, uh not all characters have the same perks, so you should go in there and choose wisely. Second to this Perk number three, I would say study your archetype. Now, what comes with studying your archetype is learning how to play with each one of the archetypes and actually getting an understanding of what they do and how they do it. And then it's applying it to your own skill and being able to manipulate or being able to take control of how they play and add it to your own game sense. And this brings me to tip number four, carrying the right loadout. I always wanna carry a primary, and a secondary and what I mean by that is a primary that makes sense and a secondary that makes sense seeing players new players walking around with two AKs or a pump shotgun and a and a submachine gun that's not how you want to play it you want to have a long range gun and you also want to have a short range by long range I mean you want to be carrying around a toggler a marksman rifle a sniper rifle an AK regular assault rifle and you want to be carrying around a Tommy or uh, um, uh, I guess a pump shotgun if you want to have that, or the silent submachine gun. There should be no reason why you're, you're, you are you're have two sniper rifles, or no reason why you're carrying a sub on sub. It's just really not the way to go. You want to be able to have a long range to medium range gun, and then you also want to be able to have a close encounter short range to medium range gun. This will help your gunfights from whether it's long range, short range, or medium range. Just this should be able to you control the gunfight from every range that you're at. Sliding over to tip number five, which might be actually one of the most important tips within this video, is the vampire sense. If you don't know what the vampire sense is yet, or you you might not even use it or use it properly. The vampire sense is the is an important mechanic that every archetype has. The sense can be used by pressing R3 or X if you have the bind on a piece of, while playing PC. What the sense actually does is highlight things to, that's important to you on a map. Like for example, audio panes, it highlights enemy players, movement, civilians, and more. Once you type this vampire, once you type this vampire sense, 
it, it kicks in for I would say no more than five seconds but no less than two what happens is it pings audio enemies movement and also makes everything so much more easier to see but once you get into the habit of actually doing it or clicking it you know while you're gliding across the map or while you're you know in your gunfights or anything like that you will start to see how really important it is to you and the final tip that i have for you guys today i would say is practice your movement blood hunt is a game based off of movement high skill high level of skill gunplay and most importantly movement if you can out move and outsmart a player he will never be able to kill you you know why you're too swifty with this shit it's about movement really it's always stay on the move make sure you learn how to combo your wall jumps and also i would say keep, keep up top um you never want to be caught down bottom on the streets in a bad situation when you have someone on top of you gliding down in slow motion beaming your ass so with that being said i really hope you guys enjoyed the video i really hope these tips really helped you guys out um hit that like button drop a comment um uh, drop a comment below in the section let me know what other tips would you guys like to know about let me know what other videos would you guys like to see based upon blood hunt um hit that subscribe button i got more videos on the way um season five it's, it's it feels good man it feels good to be back on blood hunt um thanks for watching